Hey everyone, this is the Broadcast News Writing Lecture for Friday, March 27th, 2020. So today we're going to be talking mostly about social media promotion and how to cover breaking news on social media, then some updates as well for the course, not just for how to submit stories, uh, but a couple things I want to update you on about where we're going to be going here for the rest of the semester. So for your story updates, if you're working on things for Coyote News this week from their mini newscast, just make sure that your final edit is up on D2L or a Google Drive. So sometimes D2L can get a little low on video space. If you want to also upload to a Google Drive, um, and those are free if you have a Google account, they should have more than enough space uh, to work on stories this semester. That is perfectly fine. And then just make sure that your script and website posts are uploaded to D2L. For the script and website posts, those have points attached to them um, in addition to just your story. So make sure you upload those uh, by Friday here today by 11.59 p.m. If you are working remotely this week, um, or say if you're going to be submitting something here um, over the weekend or possibly early next week, um, depending on some of the deadlines, I've kind of worked with you individually on some deadlines for things. But if you're going to be working remotely, um, just submit your final edit on a website post. So you're not going to be going through the Coyote News uh, method that you've been working on earlier in the semester. Just submit your final edit to your website post, then the website post and script to D2L. An update if you haven't heard. Um, so New Heart Center is basically locked um, in terms of studio access, so studio newsroom types of access. So with Coyote News out of studio, um, Coyote News is going to be going through some changes here in the upcoming weeks for how they're going to be producing content. I will keep you posted as well, Aaliyah and Sean, um, if there's any updates related to this class. But with Coyote News out of studio, there might be some possible stories um, that Aaliyah and Sean will have topics for that you can easily complete remotely. So if you're thinking of story ideas or if you're stuck on story ideas, I mean, there's a couple topics that you could easily do remotely. Um, especially for the interview side, using Zoom or FaceTime to record interviews with anybody at USD, we can work with you on that. Um, if you're working remotely and you're thinking, uh, well, you know, what do I do with my stories or I upload to YouTube, but now what? Um, if your stories are really good or if you want to submit your stories, say it's covering a, a local event um, or a regional or statewide event, um, and it's very, and it's still kind of newsworthy to a USD or Vermilion audience. You can still send it to Aaliyah and Sean, and they might be able to post it on the Coyote News YouTube page. Kind of getting your story promoted out there um, if it's covering a, a good regional statewide issue. Also, with Coyote News out of studio, um, we can also discuss any story ideas that you can work on from home. So, whether there's a couple topics that maybe you could still work on a USD topic and just do the editing and interviews remotely, that could be an idea, as well as other story ideas that you can work on from home if you're still working remotely. Um, make sure that you contact me, whether through email or a meeting, um, what ideas you like to cover. We're still gonna have some stories assigned for the rest of the semester. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes, um, but just kind of making sure that you're still kind of keeping track of stories you can complete maybe every week to 10 days or so um, for story ideas. A change that I want to kind of uh, bring up to speed on. So Monday, um, it's not going to be any type of lecture or certainly no mandatory class meeting, nothing like that. But we will have my 9 to 10 a.m. office hours as kind of a live Zoom meeting, kind of a chance that if you would like to join the meeting at 9, um, I will send the meeting invite and the password and you can certainly join. If you cannot join, say you're working on other class material, um, you are working at your job or taking care of friends or family or if you have chores around the house, that is perfectly fine. Um, what I will do is I will record the meeting and then post it um, as a private YouTube link that I can share uh, later on that day. The reason why we're going to have a live Zoom meeting um, from 9 to 10 a.m., and you'll get an email about this here later today, is I'm going to be making adjustments uh, for the rest of the semester. So the way I kind of structured the class for right now for online content was up to Easter break, um, kind of seeing where we were at at that point in time, uh, depending on if we were going to go back to face-to-face -face classes or not. Um, but since we are going online for the entire rest of the spring semester, um, these next few days I'm gonna be making some changes um, in terms of the remaining video stories 
as well as just kind of going through some of the broadcast portfolio reading quiz, news quiz in terms of upcoming assignments. So that's what we'll be talking about a little bit uh, during the meeting. It's not gonna be a full, full lecture, but it will be some talking points I'll go over. I'll also give any Coyote News updates um, as well, and that can be updated throughout the week. And so over the weekend, I'm gonna go through and kind of craft a, an updated schedule in terms of after Easter break through finals. Um, and then we can talk about that a little bit uh, during our live Zoom meeting. So I'll cover a little bit of these, but then the rest of the time for that Monday morning will be a Q&A. Um, any questions you have, anything you want me to go over, any input you have too. Um, so I'll come up with some ideas, but I also wanna hear from you as well um, about what are some things that you're either worried about or things that you think are going well, um, or things that you'd like to work on for the rest of the semester. Um, any input you have, any discussion that we have about that um, will really help us moving forward and will be a really good discussion to have. If you have questions for that Monday meeting, um, whether you're planning to attend the Monday meeting or not, that's perfectly fine. Just email me uh, for any type of Q&A. If you have questions that you want me to talk about during the meeting, that is great. And or you can set up a meeting at an alternative time, whether through email or Zoom, or things like that, I'm always happy to help you out. One thing I will mention uh, when I'm making adjustments in the course for the rest of the semester, um, and this is something that I always tell my students, is that any changes in the course are always going to be in your best benefit. I'm not going to add assignments, I'm not going to add anything to the workload, I will make changes that will be in your favor for the rest of the spring. And I will work with you as much as I can on stories. Any, not only just any questions you have about topics or things like that, questions you have about the course in general, concerns you have. Um, I know this is a very tough, challenging, unprecedented time for all of us. It's, it's very tough um, as students. I know with all the courses going online. Um, and it's a challenging time for faculty too. Um, and so when we have to make any adjustments in the course schedule, um, if there are things that maybe we have to condense or re-clarify a little bit, um, always, always reach out with me with, to me with any questions that you have. I will work with you as much as I can throughout this process. I will help guide you along um, if you're concerned about anything um, or if you want clarification on anything. That's what I'm here for. So never hesitate to reach out. Real quick for Monday, um, your story pitch nine is due Monday morning and a couple of changes I've made to that is it can be either Vermilion based or your hometown based. So if you are in Vermilion um, and you're thinking of a possible things, you can write them down for a story pitch. If you are somewhere else, you can write it to your hometown too. What I'm mainly looking for for your story pitches here to end the semester are things that uh, are newsworthy where you're at, um, things that maybe from a regional or state level, um, a new story could approach about. So kind of think about that for your story pitch nine. A couple things um, I'll tailor a little bit for this upcoming story pitch is you can either go D2L or email. So I know a few of you are in um, some kind of remote locations with hit or miss Wi-Fi access, hit or miss internet access. And so if it's easier to submit via email, you can do that. Um, if for some reason D2L is either freezing up or it's not loading, um, depending on your internet access, um, email is fine. If it's quicker for you to type it out that way, that is perfectly okay. The second thing is if you did not submit a pitch eight, um, since pitch eight and pitch nine are kind of the two that since we've gone to online classes, those are the two that have been assigned. If you submit two pitches for credit Monday, um, I will accept one for pitch eight and one for pitch nine if you haven't submitted them. Um, that will be kind of a little bit of a grace period for that assignment. Um, and so just kind of make sure that if you missed a pitch eight and you want to get credit for that and you submit two pitches, I will work with you for your pitch eight and pitch nine. If you just submit one, it'll go to your pitch nine. On Monday, what I'll do is I'll post to D2L the reading quiz five, six assignment. It's going to be kind of a joint reading quiz five and six. You'll be analyzing just different coronavirus coverage that's been going on these last few weeks. Um, it's not gonna be an actual quiz, quiz or questions in five minutes. It's gonna be more of an analysis type of quiz. So watch for that assignment information that'll be posted on Monday and I will give you until next Friday to do the assignment. So normally quizzes are kind of a 11.59 or one day type of approach. I'll give you the whole week to complete that. It'll be very kind of short to the point. So just watch for that um, on D2L with the assignments.
And again, Monday, those virtual office hours, 9 to 10 a.m., we'll have a live meeting. Um, go through any questions you have. I'll talk a little bit about the topics moving forward in the class. And the rest of the time will be a Q&A for you. Um, and then 1 to 3 p.m., my normal office hours through email, Google Hangouts, or one-on-one -on -one Zoom appointments. So for today's lecture, what we're talking about now is social media and covering news events. So when you go out, one of the things that it's important to remember as a journalist and as a media professional is yes, you have your audio, video, print type of platforms, but social media is a huge approach to not only disseminating that information, but promoting it as well. We're gonna talk about both today. So it's important to remember to use a variety of social media and remember that each outlet is used for specific purposes. And I know a lot of your marketing classes probably have talked about this and even broadcasting and student media work have talked about it as well. Keep in mind, Facebook is for longer posts and an older demographic. You upload a newscast, same newscast you're probably gonna promote on Twitter and Facebook, but maybe the way you promote it itself in terms of a text promotion is a little bit different or how much you market it or who you get on each platform will be a little bit different. Facebook longer and an older audience as well. Twitter, again, real time, immediate breaking news. So I've been on Twitter a lot these last few weeks, going through the coronavirus coverage, going through um, our student media posts about USD updates since I'm working remotely, um, following Kello, Dakota News Now, KTIV, um, Rapid City stations for information state and region wide. Twitter's gonna be that immediate approach, younger demographic, and real-time breaking news. Those are going to be the bulk of the examples we're going to show today for how to promote your stories. Instagram for a lesser extent. So in broadcasting, you're probably still going to use Facebook and Twitter primarily. A little bit of Instagram. Some stations are using this as well. But that's going to be more for photos, longer posts because you're not held to a character limit like you are on Twitter, and a younger audience. Snapchat, more so from maybe a, a personal side for social media, maybe a little bit um, in the news side, but Facebook, Twitter are gonna be your top two and a little bit Instagram. Same thing with Snapchat. Again, think immediate, think a younger demographic, how you're marketing to them, um, and also recognize that it's more photo video based than maybe Twitter or Facebook. The second major thing I want you to think about is what are you adding to your coverage? I always bring this up as the so what question. You're posting something, you're creating content, so what? What's the big deal? So always think, what are you adding? What news coverage are you covering? So what types of stories? Why are they important to the community? But then also what's unique about it? Is it a unique approach? Um, is it a unique promotion? Think about what's kind of new and how you're bringing up that content for the audience. Social media also goes through conversations. And that's something important to remember. When you're creating a newscast, you're publishing a print edition, you're coming up with a radio type of show or newscast, a lot of that is very one too many. There's not a lot of discussion there in terms of the public can't just bring up questions. They can call in or they can maybe send in something, but it's still fairly controlled within the broadcast. Social media takes a lot of that away where it's very one to one communication. You can post a comment, you can reply to Kello on Twitter and it creates a conversation. In extreme cases uh, with digital media, and this is certainly true with any of your Coyote News or any of your stories that you're still working on for MCOM 334 for the rest of the semester, is if for some reason, maybe a phone interview doesn't quite work, or you have a phone and graphic, but maybe it didn't really turn out that well, um, you're thinking, man, I really wish I could have gotten them face-to-face. -face. Skype, FaceTime, and Zoom, can really work in cases like this. You're going to notice this in a lot of newsrooms across the country and a lot of news shows, um, whether cable or local, they're having to resort to Skype or FaceTime or Zoom because they can't bring anybody into the newsroom. They can't bring anybody into the studio. Um, they can't go out and cover a story. So in those types of extreme cases, Skype, FaceTime and Zoom can really, really work in still getting that face-to-face -face interaction for your stories and for your content. So when you cover breaking news, and there's a couple examples here I want to talk about. One is a newspaper. So the Volant um, did an excellent job breaking the story about how public institutions in South Dakota were going to be going online for the rest of the semester. Graduation ceremonies postponed. 
posted at 12 10 p.m march 24 and notice what they did here first they did the breaking news siren up here so right away in the top left corner we're drawn to that second is they stuck short and sweet information they gave us exactly what we need to know and a character limit helps with that on twitter gave us what we need to know nothing further they couldn't write a story yet because it was that breaking of news and that's perfectly fine in a breaking news case saying we'll have more information as it's made available it just means that a story a story will be coming soon we'll have it out there but we want to get this information out right away and so facts information and attribution don't just publish information to just get it out there right away that has been a very dangerous assumption several high profile media outlets have made for several years ever since kind of social media came about attribute Board of Regents, press release this afternoon. That gives credibility to that post. And that tells us exactly where you got the information and where from. Same thing with Kelland. Now they say just in, so breaking or just in still kind of shows the audience, hey, this is an immediate as it happens story. Kello has a story down here. Um, they were able to maybe get a story online to go along with a very short post. Sometimes you'll have a couple minutes to do that. Sometimes you won't. Um, and both approaches are okay. Positive case numbers in the state are up to 41. 13 people recovered. There are two, still 268 pending tests at the state lab. Again, short, to the point information that we can read at a moment's notice. Think about when you're scrolling on Twitter or Facebook, if you have enough time to go through things. Give us the information we need to know as it happens. So that's part of the breaking news side. The other side though is promoting your content. And this is very, very important because if you don't promote content, we don't know it's existing. We don't know what's going to air. We don't know why it matters, why we should tune in. So keep that in mind with social media promotion before your content even airs. A newscast, a sports special, um, a specific podcast, a special issue. Before any of that is published, you wanna tease that content hours, days, maybe even weeks, if you have enough time. Um, sometimes with like a, a, a sports special, I'm gonna go sports example here, but Selection Sunday shows, um, the Summit League tournament shows, um, you know, state coverage of state championships, state football, state basketball. You're able to probably tweet that out, promote it a couple weeks in advance because it's a set date. You know what's going to happen. For things that maybe you're still prepping for that's going to be upcoming, but you might not know until a week or so out, still make sure you're teasing the content days in advance or hours in advance. The reason why you do that is if you don't do that, we don't know it's gonna air. Or if you maybe send out one tweet, we're going to probably miss it. I follow 3,500 people on Twitter, give or take a few. There are things from high profile outlets I'm going to miss because I can't see everything in that particular moment. In broadcast, you wanna make sure that you upload stories after they air. Now that's different from print. So a lot of times print stories might be published a couple days before. Um, certainly if it's like a breaking story, they'll get a story out that day, like a game recap or a story updates when USD did go online or updates from the Board of Regents. You can't wait for something to print to have that. So uploading that multiple days when it happens, that's fine. In broadcast, you want to focus more on the teasing side. And then for specific newscast airing stories, upload them after the air. We'll talk about why you do that in a few minutes. Third thing, you can't over promote. So a lot of these, when we talk about social media promotion, it's important to promote. Um, it's vital to do it. It's vital to have a content strategy, but you also can't over promote. And what I mean by that is two separate things. One, you wanna blend news and promotional coverage. So you can't just go 100% all news, 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 news. It's gonna get stale after a while. Um, there's not really a lot of character there. Um, the Vallant does an excellent job in terms of blending maybe the Vallant opinion polls that they retweet um, with actual news stories or some crowdsourcing material. They do a really good job with that. Um, it's blending news and promotional coverage. Same thing with like KTIV or Kello or Dakota News Now. When they reach out to people on Facebook, they're still covering news stories. There's a couple of posts there that will 
maybe promote certain things or crowdsource a couple of things. So you want to be careful you don't over promote, um, that you're not spending all your social media time 100% promoting all, you know, why you're the best newscast, why you're the best station in the market. That's okay a little bit, but you also got to have to give news there too. Second part of, of over promoting is making sure that you're not constantly tweeting. You're not constantly posting on Facebook. I do a lot of college media type of research and there are stations and outlets that have very rigid social media promotion. Here's exactly why we're promoting it. And you find stations and outlets that promote literally and post five times an hour, just random question after question after question, statement after statement. You have to be careful of that too, because the public is going to get so bombarded with information, they're going to tune out, they might unfollow. So be careful that you're not overdoing something. Have a plan in place, but don't overdo it in terms of posting multiple times an hour or four or five times a day about the same thing over and over again or repeating information. Be very careful about that. We'll talk about using Twitter handles. The content appears in their mentions. You mentioned at USD or at SD Coyotes or at Kelloland. That is going to immediately appear in their mentions and it's going to branch out your content to where those outlets have to see. They have to look up and see who's mentioning them and how. And so if it's stories, if it's coverage, they're going to see that student media or any media outlet is covering them. With student media, make sure that you're diligently promoting your content. And that doesn't just mean coming up with a couple tweets 12 to 24 hours in advance. If it's a story that's breaking, if it's a story that maybe a reporter is working on that they were assigned two days before, yeah, okay, fine. If it's a marquee production, the SGA debates, um, any type of breaking press conference where you have a few days notice perhaps, um, if it's something that you've been working on the entire semester, like a rivalry special or a Summit League show um, or any type of, of news-based interview show, diligently promote it and work with content strategists. Content strategists are there to help you. They're there to really go through and work among student media or within your outlet in terms of what's the best way to market your content and how. Who can we reach if we post at this particular time? Diligently promote, have a plan in place. These two work hand in hand, plan in advance. Don't just come up with something a week in advance if you had the entire semester to work on it. If it's something that you know you're going to cover, state football, state basketball, SGA debates, you know you're going to cover those. You know it's going to be part of your programming strategy. So you need to have a working plan weeks and maybe even months in advance, how you're going to cover it. What are different stories? Who's going to have what role? The more you plan that out, the more polished your promotion is going to be. And then finally, time management. We all get busy, professors get busy, students get busy. You know, we're all with assignments and homework and class prep and, and different things going on. That is perfectly fine. But just know that it's not an excuse for dropping the ball on any of these, for not promoting well in advance, for maybe not uploading or teasing different types of content. So just make sure you're using time management, you're balancing out, doing a little bit each day, and that can help you. So what we talk about with social media promotion. So a couple of examples here from Kello. Um, Lauren Silick was one of our students here. Um, she just graduated and now works up at Kello Land TV as a reporter. And so what Kello Land News did was they promoted her upcoming live Eye on Kello Land story during their 10 p.m. newscast. And what they said was in tonight's Eye on Kello Land, Lauren introduces you to two people in South Dakota or two people with South Dakota ties living abroad during the pandemic promoted during the 10 p.m. newscast, but before it actually airs. So they're not going to give on social media her story before it airs. They're not gonna spoil it for people watching the news. But what they are going to do is they use different hashtags, eye on Kelloland hashtags. If you don't wanna scroll through all of Kelloland's tweets, you just follow the hashtag, you're there to get that information. They use the Twitter handle of her reporter Twitter handle. Many reporters at Kello, Dakota News Now, KTIV, are going to have their own specific station social media handles. And so by doing that, it's mentioning, hey, you can even follow the spe specific reporter. This is the reporter, 
covering the story. It's going to branch out that tweet into the reporter mentions. So it's going to really reach out new audiences. On the actual story, notice it was posted at 10.34 p.m. after her story aired on Kelo. So allowed it to air, Eye on Kelloland, and then Lauren posted the actual story. So if you didn't get a chance to watch it during the newscast, you have another chance to watch. Her text post, short and to the point, gives the relevant information that doesn't take away from the story. It gives us what the story is about a little more than perhaps maybe the Kelloland tweet promoting to tune in to the upcoming newscast, but it doesn't really spoil the entire story. We just know that it's two friends, different parts of the world, what they're experiencing. It leaves really the pertinent information, the really emotional, grabbing the attention information for that actual story. And this is something that's a common template across a lot of broadcast news that you can use when you're promoting your newscasts, your shows, as well as particular assignments or segments of your broadcast production. Same thing here uh, with the Vallant Sports. So big game in Sioux Falls today. This was when USD played SDSU uh, for the Summit League Championship. Go Yotes, we won. Big game in Sioux Falls today. We've got live tweets right here. So if you can follow along with the Vallant live tweeting the game, go for it. If you want to listen, they mentioned Coyote Radio. And so that forces their tweet into Coyote Radio's mentions. Coyote Radio is aware. They're getting promoted. They can retweet. They can send it out to their followers. The Vallant retweeted with a comment uh, from their sports editor. So their sports editor mentioned the Volant Sports Twitter page. That got them into the mentions. It's an easy way to keep branching out information. So Bailey Zupke was covering the game. He's the sports editor. Maddie Sindelar is the assistant sports editor. So Madeline was covering with photos. Same thing, mentioning that, giving the reporter Twitter handles, broadening how that content is reached. This was an example from the Omaha College radio station now at UNO, same thing, mentioning sports teams. So if you're covering news, mentioning different clubs, different departments on campus, um, different USD Twitter handles, whether it's the president, dean of students, USD itself, um, athletic Twitter handles, mentioning those forces your content so that they're aware when you mention them that you exist, that you're there, that you're covering them. It's a great way to build promotion. It's a great way to build exposure and reach for your content. Another thing you can do real quick, crowdsourcing. So not just promoting content, but reaching out into the public, reaching out to your audience and having them give you information. A lot of times if it's a slow news day or if you want reaction on something, um, how USD students are affected with classes moving online, um, how USD could be affected just in terms of enrollment or you know, facilities, if they're cleaning buildings, um, things like that, you can crowdsource to that. Local media do it all the time. Um, it's a way to get additional content out there that's not maybe newscast or production focused. Um, it's a unique way to still get the brand out there. So both of these stations are from Des Moines. So KCCI promoted, what's your favorite takeout place? You might not be able to dine in at your favorite restaurant, but takeout, drive through delivery are still available. Tag your favorite place, support local businesses. You're helping promote and they want people to respond to that content. Channel 13 down in Des Moines uh, this week just went and did um, what they call senior salutes. So um, a lot of senior citizens, if they're in a nursing home or assisted living facility, can't get out or can't have family come and visit, sending cards in the mail, sending letters in the mail. You know, say hello to Joanne, send her a card or letter at Karen Acres to brighten her spirits. They could do a news story about this that would still be emotional. It would still have a lot of impact or magnitude for that city, but they can go above and, and beyond and having their followers reach out too. Getting that one-to-one -one interaction, one-to-many for a newscast, one-to-one -one and really humanizing your content to the local audience, to your followers. So crowdsourcing allows for user engagement. Again, I can reply back to Kello. I can comment on a Dakota News Now post. I'm able to do that. Years ago, you have to actually call the station, send in something for the newscast. It would take a while, 
Um, now with user engagement, it's a lot more immediate. It's a lot more impactful. But then again, don't bombard the public. Focus on issues, events, and trends. Focus on maybe a couple per week. Um, if you're a weekly newscast, focus on maybe one per day. Um, if you want to have daily content, if you're constantly bombarding with multiple polls every hour or five polls in a day, that's going to get old very, very quick. So focus on issues, events, and trends that really hit home to your local audience, that really strike a chord. Um, you know, there's a local factor here. Uh, you might not think about Pizza Ranch or Silk Road until all of a sudden maybe a part of it's taken away and local media is reaching out to your reactions to the effects of all this and you comment back um, or you send a card or you send a letter um, because it strikes an emotional tone um, with a human interest type of profile or feature. The Volant does this very, very well with their opinion polls. Um, they use humor, creativity, they do an excellent job um, focusing on issues and trends in a way that still resonates with the USD student community and it resonates with the USD audience too. Um, so really think about that's a really good way to crowdsource and get people involved in your student media outlet, in that communication. All of this leads to story interaction, media interaction. It humanizes your organization. It shows that there's people behind the scenes, that they care what you think as the public to get that input back. That's my lecture for the day. So just real quick, like I said, Monday, um, that Zoom office hours from 9 to 10 a.m. It'll be a live meeting if you want to join. Um, it'll also be recorded too. Um, so if you can't make the 9 a.m. meeting, we will record it. Like I said, I'll have a couple things I, I want to just kind of mention for the class, but then the rest of the time will be a Q&A. Um, what questions you have for me moving forward um, throughout the rest of the spring semester. You are always welcome to email me questions beforehand. Um, email me afterwards, set up an appointment time. I'm always happy to help you out. A couple of things. Remember, your story pitch night will be due by 9 a.m. Uh, you can write on something vermilion based or your hometown based. Your reading quiz 5 6 will be posted Monday. Um, that'll be just one assignment, um, kind of an analysis of media coverage about the coronavirus so far. Um, that'll be due Friday, April 3rd. And then I'll have my afternoon office hours from 1 to 3 p.m. on Monday as well. And again, you can email me, you can set up a Google Hangouts or Zoom appointment. Um, anyway, is perfectly fine. Like I said, any questions you have, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good Friday. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Um, have a good weekend, and we will talk to you again on Monday. Take care, everybody.